Hello and welcome to the Machinist News Network. I'm Deirdre Kanievsky. From Akron to Arizona, Wyoming to Wilmington, if you're in manufacturing, there's no doubt you've seen jobs go overseas and probably wondered if yours is next to go. What happened to American manufacturing? Not too long ago, the U.S. was the largest producer of goods in the world. Today, the numbers show the country has lost more than three million of these jobs in the last decade alone. Many blame bad trade policies that hurt the masses and reward the few. It's about the rules of trade and making sure that they're fair and enforceable. And as our policies are right now, they leave our businesses and our citizens, our, our workers, our farmers, our communities at a disadvantage and they're suffering. Most American workers don't earn more than they did 20 years ago. Productivity levels are up while wages remain stagnant. Some argue education is the key. Others say the data tells another story. They say if everyone in the U.S. became a Ph.D. tomorrow, there would still be outsourcing and wage problems. One very educated person, one very productive worker can never outwork four or five less productive, less educated workers. AFL's trade specialist Thea Lee says people in the workplace know what it means when a plant closes. But the rest of the world, especially big business, see it differently. Getting something cheap is like next to godliness. But Lee warns that can be dangerous thinking. And sure, a product may cost less, but maybe that's because it's not as good or as safe as it should be. I think every time you buy something cheap, you ask yourself, is it cheap for a good reason or a bad reason? Maybe it's cheap because somebody was really innovative and they had a great technology and they're really smart and they didn't take a big profit on it. Maybe it's cheap because a kid chained to a loom made it and worked 100 hours a week and had no safety uh, protections. Worker protections need to be at the core of any new trade policies. Right now, companies are allowed to sue for their rights under trade deals, but unions and environmental groups are not allowed to sue for their rights under trade deals, labor rights, environmental rights. Until we have a trade policy that allows us to enforce, us to demand the enforcement of trade, de of trade policies that protect human interests, I don't think we'll have a trade policy that works for us. Congressman Betty Sutton knows that before any new trade policies are created, a lot needs to be done to fix the old ones. She says that's the responsibility of Congress. Stopping the illegal subsidies, dealing with currency manipulation, ensuring the safety of, of products that are produced elsewhere. It's no longer theoretical. It's no longer hypothetical. We know what the consequences of our actions have been. Since 2000, Ohio alone has lost close to 200,000 manufacturing jobs, 50,000 of which can be directly attributed to NAFTA. For more machinist news, you can log on to goim.org. Thanks for watching.